In the opening episode of this series, what quantum science taught us about being humans, I mentioned that we, modern humans, the Homo sapiens species, have existed for about 200,000 years, whereas the universe has been evolving for 13.7 billion years. And that therefore, we don't have the right to claim that our human faculties are exclusive to us. All our human attributes, including intelligence, rationality and emotions, must be but manifestations of underlying mechanisms common to all that exists. I pointed out that quantum science can help us identify and understand <clears throat> these underlying characteristics from where our human qualities emerge. This episode is part one in the segment Universal Intelligence. Here I am addressing the quantum principles that explain our human intellect and how, when stripped to the very essentials, intelligence, cognition and rationality, including our motivation to plan and achieve our goals, emerge from basic universal traits. Intelligence is a complex concept, but its essence is not. Consider this conventional definition of intelligence. The capacity to think rationally, act with purpose, and adapt successfully to the environment. Intelligence is the sum of the many actions it encompasses, including our ability to comprehend, to profit from experience, to have a good sense of judgment, and to possess the quality of being determined to achieve specific objectives. You may be wondering, how could entities other than human beings possibly possess these abilities? There is a way to understand how. Quantum principles show that these are indeed qualities of everything that exists, even of inanimate objects such as a piece of brick. Let's start by looking into the bare essentials of what intelligence is at elementary levels. Consider the first of these requirements to think rationally. Stripped to its most fundamental unit of action, rationality is the ability to link and establish a working relationship with specific target systems to pursue a certain goal, and both you and an object possess this ability. Let's use a practical example. You think rationally to drive your car to work, negotiating like, you know, likely obstacles and finding your way around. To achieve this goal, you emit and absorb energy waves connecting with all relevant systems, such as other cars, traffic lights, roads, and possible obstructions, constantly advancing towards your destination step by step. Consider now a molecule. It does exactly the same. It constantly emits and absorbs energy waves that connect with other molecules, advancing to its destination of linking with them to form particular structures. And you both do this by adopting a slightly new quantum state at every quantum jump. The most essential act of intelligence is to connect two events. If we can identify the mechanism by which everything does this, we will have found the underlying universal process responsible for our rationality and intellect. 
Consider the quantum principles stating that everything we observe is a quantum system and that quantum systems emit and absorb energy. The energy that one system, let's call it system A, emits is called an offer wave. When this discharged energy matches the energy wave of another system, for example system B, it changes the state of this system, prompting it to respond with what is called an echo wave, which in turn alters the state of system A. The result is that these two systems now become connected, forming a new common entity AB. Notice that the connection between these two entities result in mutual changes. To connect, entities need to display a wish, an intention to connect. It's easy to see how this happens in us, people, but how do objects such as molecules do this? In quantum physics, this intention has a name. It is referred to as a propensity. How does a particle manifest a propensity or an intention, Martin asked. It shows a propensity to move towards projected possibilities. An electron, for instance, may have a propensity to occupy a particular space around the nucleus. To have an intention is to display an inclination to fulfill an objective and involves discriminating amongst options. Prior to the advent of quantum mechanics, scientists tumbled over impossible obstacles by searching for answers based on the belief that events were predetermined. This was based on the Newtonian proposition that the universe was governed by the preset states of molecules, which suggested that if we knew where all the molecules in the universe were at one particular time, we could know the state of everything at any time simply by calculating where they would be at a different time. And in order to justify this view, researchers were forced to presume that if the fate of reality was already set in advance, free will, intentions, wishes and hopes were simply passive consequences, leading to the inevitable conclusion that our mental state was causally impotent. These views were bound to be challenged, and indeed they did not pass the test of time. The main counter-argument came with the assertion that it seemed highly improbable that nature would leave intentions and free will, the very forces of motivation and evolution, in such a redundant role with no say. Following the success of quantum mechanics, some scientists started to propose that a person is essentially a goal-seeking system, actively generating their own behaviors and responses through intentions, choice, free will and diligence. And what you are saying is that these are also properties of atoms, molecules and everything else Robert proposed. Yes, the prophet said. The propensity of quantum objects can be seen as essentially an intrinsic intention to move towards specific ends, which all structures display. And this reasoning gave rise to the interesting proposition that what you sense as wishes and aspirations are expressions of the natural propensity that all systems exhibit. But there is a thorn in the stem of this rose. Connecting with another system may not qualify as a truly act of intelligence because the most elementary unit of intelligence is the ability to connect two external events. In living organisms such as us or other intelligent creatures, this is rather obvious. We connect, for example, the ringing of the telephone with answering it, driving with our car or the TV with its remote control. But how do molecules at quantum level connect 
pair of events. We can explain this elementary mechanism in a way similar to how we explained how people are united under the umbrella of a collective consciousness as demonstrated by the Gedanken thought experiment that we saw in episode 1 of the series. Recapping briefly, the Gedanken experiment showed that when a person makes a decision to observe something like a molecule, the observation changes not only the state of that molecule, but also the state of other molecules connected with it and of people who observe these other molecules. In this manner, the decisions made by any one individual would have an impact on the state of the consciousness of complete strangers. A variation of this thought experiment could be explained in the following way. Imagine that system A has a propensity to connect with system B and that it sends an offer wave. If the wave matches with that of system B, it alters its state and also its propensity, which now prompts it to respond with an echo wave. The result is that it now changes the state and propensity of system A. If the new propensity of system A is to connect with another system, for example system C, and successfully does it, then system C and B become connected as well. All quantum systems, including a person, have this ability to emit offer waves and absorb echo waves, prompted by their propensity. This thought experiment does show us that the ability to act in basic acts of intelligence is common to all. This is the most basic unit of communication, and it is an expression of elementary intelligence in the sense that all quantum structures are capable of distinguishing one option out of many, matching their energy waves. And the connection is always between oneself and another system. Here is how it works. Prompted by a propensity, that is, by a hidden intention, you and everything else probe the universe for a target entity that might respond to this intention. And when a connection is made, let's call this connection with event 1, the two entities are linked. Following this connection, your state, that is, the state of your body or yourself, has changed. And as a result, the ensuing new intention prompts you to connect with another particular event. Let's call this event 2. In this way, any two events are connected, mediated by your intention. The essence in the definition of intelligence is to connect pairs of events. The more pairs an entity is able to connect, the more intelligent this system is. We possess high intelligence because we have the capacity to connect many pairs and quite rapidly. We do this through abstract and symbolic thinking. But intelligent acts also require motivation and determination to achieve desirable goals, or to put it differently, we need a motivational feeling that prompts us to take action towards achieving these wishes. The challenge now is to identify what are these basic emotions at quantum levels. You will be surprised to know that quantum scientists have done just that. You may think that the capacity to act with purpose and determination to pursue goals is exclusive to humans or some selected organisms, the, prof the prophet answered. But in reality, these are attributes that have been well researched in inanimate structures, such as in particles and molecules. They were studied under the rather odd term the quantum Zeno effect. 
initially proposed by the physicist George Zodachan and Badiant Mithra of the University of Texas in 1977. This premise was later adopted by most of the scientific community, especially those researching consciousness and free will. The quantum Zeno effect is a very easy concept to understand, but you need to know a little bit about how particles behave. Particles are waves of energy that are continuously on the move at great velocities until something disturbs them. If undisturbed, they are very unstable, constantly changing from one state to another. But when something connects with them, they freeze into the particular state they have at that moment. The collapse of the wave function, that is, to transform something from the wave function C of probabilities into its physical form, requires perseverance. After the potential target has been contacted, Repeated probing is required to establish a relationship with it, and this is the case between molecules as it is between a person and an event. That's why when we want something in earnest, we tend to keep it in mind. I started this presentation by explaining the essential features of an intelligent act according with quantum principles. I said that all quantum systems, including particles and a human body, emit and absorb energy waves and use these reverberations to connect with everything else in pursuit of their particular objectives. The most essential act of intelligence is to connect two events, and all quantum systems do this when, after connecting with one event, a change in their propensity prompts them to connect with another event, thus resulting in the two external events becoming entangled. I said that all entities, living or inanimate, display a propensity to move towards prospective possibilities, and that that is what we feel as an intention. Since all quantum systems display propensity, intentional acts are universal common traits. All quantum systems, that is, everything we perceive or imagine, display basic intelligent acts by connecting external events through their energy vibrations mediated by an intention or propensity. Higher intelligence, our ability for abstract thinking, is the ability to connect more pairs of events rapidly. 
I explained that intelligent acts require motivational feelings, and that quantum science unveiled that this quality manifests in the ability of all quantum systems to do repeated probing. In us, we recognize this quality as perseverance. In the next episode, I will be covering part two of the segment on universal intelligence. I will describe how quantum science provides us with the relevant principles to explain how our brain gives us our high intellect and how the brain evolved in the first place from brainless organisms. You will notice that there is a catch. It is not really us who are intelligent, but our brains. Quantum principles showed us that we use our brains to process information rationally in a way somehow not unlike how we use a computer or a calculator to perform cognitive tasks.